got a Ford Taurus came in. <clears throat> Uh, this is the one that I put a transmission in. I just never documented it because it's like a shit ton of these and they're everywhere. So the car sat for <clears throat> for two months. <laughs> they finished paying for it. Uh, come get the car. No problem. You know, things happen. Um, but the thing is, you know, I put low mileage transmissions in vehicles to prevent this from happening. Like it coming back. Things happen, right? I mean, I put dozens of transmissions in. Despite them being low mileage, even low mileage vehicles that have like common transmission problems have problems. So, but <clears throat> I think this is uh, fixable. Uh, reasons being, I mean, it came in a new, it came in in a neutral state. So it it the, the kid drove for two weeks, and I'm just thinking maybe this kid has bad little car or something. But came in um, after two weeks of them having a the vehicle, and like you know what, they still have four months left on the six month warranty. Hey, if I gotta put it back, put another transmission here, I'll just swallow my pride and put one in here. But, 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 um, this is not something internal going on with this transmission. So, it is in a neutral state. However, there's fluid on the transmission. And if I could turn my light on, I'll get, like take a look at that. There we go. So, there's. You know, in there, zoom. So there's fluid all down through here. So there's fluid on the neutral safety switch, the position switch, and it's everywhere. And like on the um, uh, this uh, diverter valve, whatever they call this, this vacuum portion here that goes to the brake booster, and um, whatever. Like it's T fitting. It's it's connected to this. It's it's there. Is everywhere, so you get the idea. I think I don't think technical is like important. <laughs> it's not related to what we're looking at, but uh, one thing I guess is it's bittersweet. I mean, it's bad that they had these transmission problems. However, you know, I know um, uh, it's it's repairable. So the fluid was coming out the dipstick. There was no fluid in there when I got it, and it obviously came from somewhere. That's kind of good and bad, but. Why did it come out of dipstick? And naturally, I'm thinking if a car has oil coming out of dipstick, likely it's going to be some type of obstru obstruction somewhere. And this is my first time ever having to deal with this particular problem with the transmission. Have, well, my second. Uh, the first one was a Pontiac G6, and it was just taking in consideration what generally happens when an engine has oil only coming out of one orifice. orifice one is supposed to have a breathing system. This transmission does have a breathing system. So it's a um, breather, <laughs> obviously. That breather is going to reside by the neutral safety switch or the, um, I don't know what people want to call it. I know they got like a thousand names for these things. Um, I, it's just the neutral safety switch to me. Um, selector thingamabob this thingy here so looking down the side here see this little black tab here that's the breather now it's a possibility that maybe just with age it just fail or the pressure that builds up it'll cause this valve to want to lift up to and based on what I'm feeling here and how it's designed, it can catch itself on this lip at the base of this nipple here, under the nipple, and um, it'll probably restrict it from flowing. So the pressure has to go somewhere, and it can't come out of this hole here, because if it did, it would have never got around the um, master cylinder or the master cylinder reservoir or anywhere above the top here so I'm going to put I want to make sure this breather here is not obstructed maybe just put a hose on it and breathe into it blow into it and uh, if it blows freely I'm just gonna basically route it like any other breather system and um, fill it up with transmission fluid clean the area and test drive it make sure everything's fine so we should be good but um, let me get a uh, let me get some hose to go on here. And it'll like I think I feel like a 516 
may fit on there. I don't know. Let me see what I got available. Before we make it so user friendly to access things, repair their vehicles. It's like it's like they intended this to happen. It's totally intended. I need a flathead, don't I? Shouldn't be forced, just, just let it naturally happen. Uh, I'm gonna need some brake cleaner. Alright, 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 alright. Blocking all the good stuff. Alright, here we go. I got me some nice long hose here. Stick this right on top of there if I can get it to cooperate. So when I breathe through it, you hear it bubbling out of there. <coughs> it's coming right on out. If I push my push through there, so not a big deal. Um, I just want to make sure that it's not obstructed. So there's my proof. You know, it bubbled right out once I breathed through it. So, uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I can I think I'll be able to get a zip tie on the other end here. Keep this from uh, coming loose, even though, you know, it's not like, it's not in the, um, the engine should be moving, but it, it'll, it'll hold. It'll work like it's supposed to. I'm going to get this. down far as I can and uh, zip tie work perfectly fine and get this routed through the back so take this here that Can I overcome that there we go can't wait till I get over this fucking cold man I feel like crap One job and I oh come on really one job and I screwed it up. Let's see if I can get this back on here like so. I tell you what, that's what I got more zip ties for. They're expendable. Can afford to screw up 80 more times, so we're good. Come on here. All right, let me try this way. See what happens. You know what? I'm probably gonna regret putting on this way too. I gotta overcome that lip. It'll be loose enough. lined up <clears throat> and let's see if we can just route it some way on here and up and over this out of the way let's see what eh no Out of the way, right? I don't think 
focus. I think it's that bad, I don't zip tied to the frame right here. Good. All right, so got the hose in place need some dikes to finish the job. <laughs> All right. Let's see if I can get this in there. Bam. Bam. It's gonna get tranny fluid. You know, none of, none of this is like adding up too many double entendres. Let's see. Let's see if we can get a rag. Get everything cleaned up before I do. Get a wash down freight cleaner. Let that soak. Alright. Got the brake cleaner all through here so everything's cleaned up. The Hair for the breathers, you know, it should hold up pretty well. I don't think it's going anywhere. And um, but mainly, uh, once I get this done with, I'm gonna put a rag around the dipstick so when I test drive it, I'll know if it continues to push out or not. Also, um, I'm gonna put a rag around the end of the breather here so I'll know that uh, that this is a good repair. And uh, let's see if I can get this around. Or just pretty much get it kind of sitting up. I'll probably just leave it up like this. I don't know if it drips on the neutral safety switch or not, but I'll definitely put a rag around the uh, uh, dipstick there. So that's how I'll be able to keep track, <laughs> excuse me, what's going on. But I'm going to get me some Mercon 5 and fill it up like normal. And I will say one thing I've had. <laughs> I should have paid more attention to when I got this transmission in here originally was when I filled it up with fluid, the fluid didn't want to like stay settled. So I'm pretty sure that was a clear indication that there was some problems going on. And um, But this should take care of it. It's breathing. Um, I blew through it. It's obviously got fluid. Um, it's obviously got a, it's got a decent passage. I mean fluid came right out of the dipstick so I, I think we should be fine. I think we should be good. Got my uh, transmission fluid. Got the. This is work on five. I swear my store wouldn't even have that like in stock. Oh, son of a bitch! <laughs> How much of a screw up I can be? Uh, let's try this again. This is why I keep a lot of brake cleaner. I will screw up. Now it's in the hole there. I'm going to start up and go ahead and get this fluid in there. And we'll look at the mileage. Take it on a test drive and see what happens. I'm either going to have to you know, have to warranty this transmission or it's going to be a successful repair and I'll just be out of the money that I had to put back in it to fix it. So it wasn't that much. Hose was free and filling it up with fluid, $30 so should be like three quarts. Hopefully that should be enough. If not, then $35. All right. I don't have the fluid filled all the way up. I do need to run to the parts store and get more fluid. 
Uh, so what I'm gonna do is put this, put a dry rag inside of the dipstick hole, and once I get to my destination, the dipstick is gonna ride in the front with me. Checked out the fluid on the rag. Check the fluid on the rag there and see if there's any type of excessive amount of fluid in it. It should bleed up. So if it's trying to push out, then the fluid will bleed up and the rag will get saturated in the oil. So I'm gonna look at the mileage. Uh, you're at uh, 184.532. So I'll tell you what, let's take this mileage here and reset that joker. Zero. Let's go on the drive. Got the vehicle driven. Uh, I hate this car. I hate Fords. I, I just don't like them. But got 11 miles on it. If you can see that. Yes. Oh, yes. So I got. Let me see here. I got 13 miles on it. Oh. Unfortunately. The car started having like a tick. The oil light came on, so. I'm like, why is this oil light coming on? It wasn't on before and it gets my possession and the shit happens, so. It was ticking, the oil light came on. So, yeah. I'm like, don't tell me the oil pump's going out in this damn thing. It had plenty of oil in it. The oil looks nice and clean. But when I... When I look at the oil filter, the tag was ripped off a little bit and like it has been on there for a while. So I'm like, the filter has got to be stopped up. Change the oil filter and the noise stops. Not the noise, but the noise begins, the oil light goes off and then the noise begin to uh, stop. So that's fixed because of a stop the oil filter. I never had any issues with MicroGuard. I've been, I put them on. Dozens and dozens of cars. I do like a lot of oil changes. Crazy. But I think when we bought the car, well, they, when they bought the car, um, you know, there was some issues um, with, I guess the, it was an old man's car. The car was, wasn't driven like that. Probably just need an oil change. But the oil's clean. So it's got a new oil filter. It works now. Drove it around like five more miles, so we're, we're good. But other than that, <clears throat> I'm going to check the uh, cloth here. So we can look down at the breather, that's dry, and I'm going to pull my cloth out, which is also dry, so no oil, no issues here. So I'm going to say this is a confirmed fix. I mean, if honestly, if it ran itself so low to the point where the car wouldn't even run anymore. And I wound up having to go back to the parts store and bought like two more quarts of oil. It was five quarts low. And it wound up costing me $50 to put fluid in here. So they'll just be only responsible for paying for the oil filter, but that's coming out of my pocket there. So it's just taken care of. But, um, I, so yeah, I guess as a recap, uh, I guess if you ever have any issues with blow by in your transmission, and it's just spewing out the dipstick. Look for on the vent valve. If there's there's some ventilation issues, you know, especially if you have this Ford, this type of car. Check the um, that little uh, rubber stopper that was on top of the uh, vent. Blow through it. Make sure you can blow into the uh, crank, the case of the transmission, and just make sure there's no obstructions. Put a vent tube on it. So, and I, I guess why uh, it would need to be this long. Um, the reason why I know this is because of technical service bulletin. This is why it's important to do your uh, research when it comes to having certain issues. But obviously, 
Um, and this is like from partial personal experience, but if you have an issue with a vehicle, check for ter technical service bulletins because some cars are just going to have like parasitic issues to where you just, just something is going to be unique to that particular car, even though it may have similar symptoms for other things. But um, this is that service bulletin confirm fix. Sorry about, <clears throat> Sorry about that. I had a phone call. But um, but this issue does make sense uh, as far as the uh, fluid shooting out the uh, dipstick and causing the car to run low on fluid. Um, you know, you have any type of blockage like dealing with the motor. If it, if there's a PCV blockage, you're going to have uh, oil leak out of the orifices where it can. Anything that's weak. Uh, so, like I remember I had a car like a Chrysler 300 forever ago. Girl never kept the oil changed. It was like sludge built up like crazy. You know, that's when oil wasn't of the quality that it is today. But, um, you know, hers was literally just shooting out a dipstick, you know. So, I mean, it, these things do happen. But just like this, same principles. I mean, it's, it there's air that can get in there. It needs to vent. And if you got rotating parts, it's going to develop a, like pressure. It's going to pull from one and then just generate pressure. So that, that, that air pressure has to go somewhere. And, um... It's not that of like the combustion chamber, but you still have rotating parts and, and like it can not to get like all in depth, but you know, I don't know all the principles and stuff, but you know, you, you're going to have some pressure. I mean, it's minute, but it's enough to push to move fluid. But, um, but you know, like this, it was obvious. And uh, luckily, it was something I don't. I don't have to use a warranty on this vehicle. They can drive for another four months, hassle-free. I'm just glad I don't have to sit there and go back over this car and put another transmission in it because of something that went wrong. And it's like weird that this transmission had problems because I never had a problem with a transmission from this place. And I put dozens of transmissions from this place in vehicles, and uh, that's why I get low mileage transmissions. This transmission literally only had like. 70,000 miles, something like that on it, but low mileage transmissions do have problems, so, you know, it can happen. But anything could happen with this car, you know, anything, and I want to ensure that, like, everybody's informed as far as what happens, because who am I? I don't have that many subscribers, and, you know, a lot of people like to attribute credibility with subscriptions, so, but you're not going to know if you're not subscribed to the channel. Hit that subscription button. Subscribe to the channel. Stay informed. Have that reassurance of my work. And uh, see you on the next one.